lab studies the evolution of animal behavior. We do a variety of experiments all on fruit flies. We think about, you know, if a particular individual chooses a particular environment, how does that choice then sort of cascade into different, you know, nutritional effects, different lifetime experiences, different social interactions, et cetera, et cetera, to ultimately shape evolutionary processes. What we're looking at specifically is who is interacting with who. So there's 20 flies in a group. And so what we do is we take videos of them. And so we can just like take that video, plug it into a tracking program, and it just outputs data on where every single fly is throughout the entire video, every frame of a video. It's coming in, you're like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, and that little wing flick right there is like, hey, go away. They are socially interacting. We can tell that just based on the, the output from that tracking software. We do a lot of experiments where we compare individuals in the same or different environments in a way that's similar to like a twins reared apart design that you might be familiar with in psychology. So the power of the twins reared together, twins reared apart design is that you can take individuals who you know are the same genotype, just like clones or you know, identical twins, and ask whether they have the same behavior or not, given being in the same environment or not. So for example, if you have two twins and one is aggressive and one is non-aggressive, you might conclude or preliminarily assert that the reason for those differences, it can't be genotype, right? Because they're the same genotype. So maybe it was something about their environment. And so with flies, we can do that on a large scale with many, many different sets of identical twins, essentially. And instead of just having two individuals of the same genotype, we can have dozens or hundreds or even thousands, depending on how many we need, of individuals of the same genotype. We can't tell them apart, but the way that we can tell them apart is by painting each of them a different color. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. And then you kind of like hold it down on its back and then just put a little dollop of paint right on its back. I feel like there's two really cool things that we found. And one is that just there's a genotypic basis to the position individuals hold in their network. The social environment that we all experience has a genetic component to it. And it's not just random chance of like how individuals interact and how the structures of social groups emerge over time. And then I think the second big point to take away is that the importance of social structure and how individuals are nested within their social group really depends on other things, things that are external to the individual. Um, in our case, we started the nutritional environment. People don't really think of flies as having social behaviors. They think of them as just like mating a lot and like getting in your food. It's actually like an active process of behavior where they're seeking out or avoiding different types of social interactions. So flies are more like us socially than people might realize. 